Good afternoon, all, and welcome to today's uh, Market Matters webinar, uh, where we're going to give an overview of some of the new features that have gone onto the Market Matters uh, website. So, thanks very much to the um, many of you that are on the line today, and thanks for joining us and taking interest in the new Market Matters website. My name's James Gerrish. I'm the uh, primary contributor to Market Matters and the, the lead portfolio manager. Uh, I'm also a portfolio manager at Shuren Partners. And I'm, I'm really excited around um, the evolution that Market Matters has taken over the last, um, well, really a couple of years, but we've we've ramped it up in terms of our online web presence and what we're putting into in, investing in the online um, uh, usability and insight that we're providing to our growing number of subscribers. So once again, thanks for joining us uh, today and I hope to give you a, a really clear overview of what, I, what we're trying to achieve with this website, um, the outcomes that we're looking to get and how we're trying to make it easier for um, retail investors to analyse the market and analyse um, individual um, stocks within the market. And I think that's the main thing. A lot of the developments that we've made in this website have been around analysing individual stocks. And I'm going to get onto that very shortly. So just to give you a, a brief overview, what you're looking at now is the dashboard. So this is where you would get to after you've logged in to the Market Matters website. So um, you can get there by a number of ways. You'll get an, uh, you'll generally get email reports and you can click on codes, you can click on a login now button or you can go directly to the website. So I won't bore you with the login um, features, but this is your um, dashboard and it allows for some customization, et cetera. Today, I just want to uh, give you, a, a, before we dig into it, just the, the brief changes that we've done. So we've linked in 20 minute delayed data into the um, website, and that's for all ASX listed shares, um, ETFs, uh, and we've also uh, brought in US um, stock data as well. So that's end of day data for US stocks. So we're going to have some insight into um, the vast number of stocks. I think there's about 7,000 uh, US stocks that we've brought into the site. Uh, we've got fund fundamental data that we've brought into the um, site courtesy of a deal we've done with Refinitiv. Um, and we're, we're, we're trying to display all of these things in a really easy to use format. And I'll get onto that very um, shortly. Uh, consensus data is being brought into the site. Um, so that provides a, um, you know, what uh, the majority of the market, what analysts in the market are thinking about a particular stock in terms of their earnings profile. Uh, and I wanted to give a, a comprehensive stock report. So not an average um, analyst report, but a, but a comprehensive quant, um, which is quantitative based report that looked at trends around a particular stock. And we've managed to do that um, with a, a detailed stock report that I'll get to um, very shortly. But I'll give you a, um, a, a quick overview of what the dashboard is. Um, the, the, the dashboard is very similar to what we had in the last Market Matters website. Of course, you've got our trading alerts, which pop up um, for 48 hours when a trading alert goes out to um, subscribers. We've got our hit list here. You can put whatever stocks you like on the hit list. You can put full Market Matters portfolios. The latest updates are when we've updated a viewpoint um, on the Market Matters um, uh, on the Market Matters website. And then we delve into really the, 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 the change to the Market Matters portal. We've added in an analysis tab. So we've always had the opinion plus action framework, and now we've added in analysis. The genesis of why we've put in um, analysis is um, to try and make it as much like a, um, a, a digital advisor as possible. So if you go and speak to an advisor, you'll get some market analysis, you'll get the advisor's opinion, and then there'll be a, a, an action that that uh, advisor is likely, likely to tell you to make. Um, and that's what we've based the, the flow of the Market Matters website off. You've got a pretty cool um, ticker, which is just looks at um, the movement of stocks with a, a market cap greater than 500 million. Um, the chart on the dashboard is the chart of these uh, ETFs. Um, you can toggle through that and we'll get into some of the more advanced charting um, components of the site a little bit later on. I'm just going to move that so I can um, 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 uh, move the chart back into its rightful spot. And then this is a, a what we're watching feature. So at the moment, we've got dividend stocks in there, but we'll aim to to to, um, to change that on a weekly basis. So there'll be stocks that, uh, you know, or a theme in the market that we're watching. Top gainers and top uh, fallers for the day. 
any of these stocks can be uh, clicked through. You've then got a various market matters content that we can that we publish on the site, our portfolios, and um, the, the the daily reports. I think it's um, before I um, get into individual stocks. I think that the the, the general place that people start um, uh, interacting with market matters is through the emails. They're really um, they're really a popular source of information. So you get your email um, at nine forty five in the morning, or that's when we send it out. You'll get it when your email server delivers it to you. Um, you can of course jump on the market matters website at any time, and the reports are generally updated um, sooner than that nine forty five. We'll look at um, a particular topic each day. And within that topic, we'll be um, addressing some individual stocks. These stock codes are, are in the Market Matters report. And this is another way you can get through into the Market Matters website by clicking through on one of these stock codes. And, and now you're going to have a, a better understanding of um, you know, the, the depth of coverage that we've now put in there. So this is what we call um, the, the stock page. This is CBA. It gives you some understanding of the um, top level metrics of CBA. So what it's done today, this is 20 minutes delayed. Remember, um, you know, it's, it's 12 month return, the volume, the dividend yield, it's PE ratio, it's 52 week range. So all these are, are quite important um, inputs. And this is all sourced from a data feed. What Market Matters um, does, this is our latest action. So this is uh, this is an insight that we've provided into the site. And this is whether we're bullish or bearish a particular um, stock. At this stage, we're you know, reasonably bullish on CBA. Digging into what um, has changed. So we've got the analysis tab, we've got the opinion tab, and we've got the, the uh, action tab. The analysis tab looks at some key features around CBA. So it gives some share price activity data for the day. Just running through that, it looks at what the, the, the stock is trading at, the level of turnover that it's done, where it opened at. The VWAP is the volume weighted average price for the day. So that's um, the average price that the stock has traded at throughout the day on a volume weighted basis. And then we look at our charting functionality. So this is one of the, the, the really interesting things that we've put into the site that a lot of subscribers are asking for. Uh, so this looks at um, charting. You can go up there and amend um, timeframes in charting. We often use a lot of weekly charts. I think it, 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 it um, gets rid of some of the noise uh, in, uh, in, in individual um, stocks and security prices. You can go up and change the, um, uh, the, the price points. So you can change all the chart type from a, an open high, low close to a, a candlestick chart and, and, and others as well. Um, you can look at um, trend lines and retracements and fans. Um, there's a whole bunch of technical indicators that you can go and put on these charts um, and, uh, and overlay that. So you can um, uh, look at a particular stock from a technical or a charting perspective when you're on the site. Um, and uh, this is the expansion and contraction uh, button. So that allows you to um, increase and decrease the, the, the chart to make it a full screen or not. One of the things that we wanted to do was really to, to make it really easy. So um, when I look at a stock and this is, you know, I, I, I look at the chart first, I then look at some of the key ratios that that uh, company is um, delivering um, and some of the key information that is uh, put out on that stock. So if we go down here on the CBA page, for instance, there's a bit of the information that's um, just about the stock. This is the current um, earnings profile of the stock. So in FY20, one CBA did revenue of 24.1 billion. They did EBITDA of 16 billion with a net profit of 8.9 billion. Um, the earnings per share number and dividend per share, that equates to that um, yield, et cetera. It's currently on a P of 18.78 times. The estimates take it, take it a bit further. So this is consensus estimates. So in this instance, there's no number there for EBITDA. Banks don't release EBITDA numbers. EBIT would be the preferred measure there um, for banks. But you can see what we're looking for in terms of, or the market's looking for, in terms of the dividend per share and the earnings per share over the um, uh, over the next 12 months. I am getting these two chains. So you can compare the earnings with the earnings from last year and the dividend with the dividend. So that is a change that's going to be pushed live very shortly. We then look at the um, what... Uh, broker's uh, view on this stock. So at CBA, we've got eight buys, uh, sorry, eight sells, I should say, one strong sell, six holds, zero buys, and one strong buy. And we'll get into what this all means very shortly. 
The target price forecast, again, this is sourcing brokers. So the lowest target for CBA in the market is $77. The highest is 110, with the mean being $92.20. So that's the essentially the midpoint of the um, what analysts think CBA is worth at this current time. So it's trading around the average analyst price forecast. This looks at um, consensus recommendations and brokers who um, put their input into this platform um, can go and give the value or the, 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 the conviction in their call between um, uh, one and 10 and this, or one and five, I should say, um, and, and this has got a, a hold conviction at the moment. The, I'll, I'll go to forecasts in a moment. So you can go straight to forecasts um, through that. I'll just click to ratios because ratios are an interest, interesting point. You can you can expand and subtract um, or 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 um, or not these, um, but they just give some interesting per share um, uh, 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 ratio information. So around volume and data, around um, what the um, per share EPS and the like is doing, dividend over five years, valuations on a bunch of different metrics, financial strength, and I've tried to put in what. Uh, we find uh, really useful when we're analysing particular stock, um, growth rates and the like. So you can go in and dig as much into a stock as you like. I think the other thing that um, I think is really useful is uh, in the forecasts and the financials. I'm going to skip over forecasts and just go to financials because ratios and financials are all about the 12 months that um, have just been. So the financials here, we look at the income statement, the balance sheet and the cash flow. But what's interesting here is we can plot different things on the chart there. So you might, you might look at for net income and that plots net income for CBA. Um, and these information icons tell you what you're actually plotting. But you can go and you might remove net income and you might want to want to see um, the diluted uh, EPS. So, so um that is um, the earnings per share and the dividend of CBA and see what the trends are over time. So this is the dividend for CBA and this is the earnings per share. So it's, it, it's really insightful in my view, looking at trends. So I wanna be able to see the trends of a, of a particular company. So, um, uh, you know, particularly in, in, in companies that um, you can see the, does revenue, and you know, revenue might be growing, but costs might be growing at a greater clip and that's having an impact on profit. Or profit might be growing at a lot stronger rate than revenue and that implies or shows that the company's got a lot of operational leverage. Um, so those you know, graphing different things, we try and be a very visual report in market matters or a very visual platform. Um, and I think it's a great way for investors to understand um, you know, the trends that are, that, that, that are occurring in a stock from all different metrics. So you could go on, you could go on, um, uh, plot any of these inputs onto this chart. So, um, you know, you look at cash receipts and CBA, which is very similar to what the revenue um, number is. You could look at net change in cash and um, plot that onto the chart. So the, 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 the really, um, it's a platform that you can go and do how um, uh, plot what you'd like to. In terms of forecasts, I wanted to do two, a couple of things when we we're thinking about forecasts. I wanted to have a, allow subscribers to download a detailed stock report uh, in the first instance that was not around uh, market matters opinion or our action framework, but a third party that looked quantitatively of what the market was looking at in a particular stock. And this is what's available um, in the stock report. I'm going to get onto that very shortly. The price forecast is interesting. I think one of the things that um, I think market matters does well is being, a, being transparent in our calls. I, it frustrates me no end and no doubt it frustrates our users out there around um, a lot of uh, uh, services put out recommendations, but there's no, uh, and, bro and, and brokers and analysts do this as well. There's no accountability of part for past recommendations. So we've tried to create a, a platform that shows full transparency of past recommendations. And that's one of the things that we've tried to feature in the data that has come onto this site um, in the last couple of weeks. The price forecast looks at a couple of different things. So the actual stock price in blue, the estimate mean 
of target price. So the market um, is what the what the mean um, target price is at that particular time. So you can see CBA typically trades above what brokers think it is worth. That's always been the case. CBA is an expensive bank because they're a high quality bank. Bankers, brokers tend to, or analysts tend to uh, think CBA is overpriced all the time, but that's, that, that's fine. This chart will show that. We then look at where um, analysts expect CBA. And I, I, I talked, um, showed you this before, the mean is 92.20, the high is $110 and the low is 77. So it plots that the, the variance in analyst expectations on this in this window, which I think is really important. We then go into some financial forecasting. So we've, we've tried to keep this you know, um, fairly straightforward. We're looking at just a couple of key metrics in terms of the actuals. So what the company has done versus the estimates, what the market believes that company is gonna do in the next 12 and 24 months. So in this case, 2022 financial year and the, the, the 2023 financial year. So in CBA's case, CBA has done 23.7 billion revenue in 2020, 24.1. It's gonna be very similar in 22, jumping and up a little bit in 2023. 20, the net income number, um, and you can, you can just plot that on the chart if you like, um, and it gives you a really good trend in terms of CBA's revenue. The net income number is the same. So this is um, what profit CBA is going to do. And you can see that again on the chart. The dotted line is the estimates. The uh, solid line is the actuals. And it breaks this down further. So we've got the number of estimates is 16, which means the number of brokers that uh, are providing uh, coverage into on CBA and putting their numbers into this, um, into this capture. Um, the high, low, um, and mean estimates for um, uh, for these here uh, for the net income number um, for both 2022 and 2023 and the same and so on and so forth for earnings per share and dividend. You can look at um, the estimates and you can plot those estimates on the chart. So you can see what, what the stock has done in the past and what the market uh, anticipates that that stock will be doing in the future. So you can have a, a really good handle on whether or not it is going in the right direction um, or not. And finally, these are just company announcements that um, CBA has made and you can go and download those company announcements um, very easily. The overview is sort of your, um, you know, where you go back to, to look at the, the bigger picture things on a particular stock. But it's not just analysis is one thing, it's then having applying opinion over that analysis and having an actionable outcome at the back end of it. And that's what um, where Market Matters differentiates itself from a lot of the other providers out there. So the opinion, when you click on the opinion page, it will give you all the opinions that Market Matters has written on CBA um, over time. So you can go all the way back, any, any piece of um, content that mentions CBA, talks about CBA, it will list it here. So you can go and go back in time and see what we've said about this um, stock um, over time. Of course, there's a business summary there. And then there's any videos that um, has mentioned CBA in it um, and we've posted on the site. Down here, the related question, of, of course, CBA is held in two portfolios. And if a stock is held in a portfolio, it will be detailed here. I'm gonna go into the portfolios very shortly. The related q and is, is also interesting. That will be um, put on the stock um, page. Um, any question or answer that has been linked to that stock over time will be listed there. I think we've got a bit of a little bit of rejigging to do around how these are listed and where they're listed. Um, so that might be an, another development that we're looking at um, going forward. But for now, but for the, for now, uh, I should say they are there. And then the action framework is all our actionable insights into CBA, and they are linked back to the opinion. So this morning we wrote. Um, um, we we um, didn't cover CBA. We've had a um, we had a um, uh, an increase. Oh, we we looked at CBA this morning, which is linked back there. So um, CBA, we like C, um, CBA in the fresh lows of 2022. That's the actionable item. If you want to go into the linked content, you can, and it will take take you to the linked content and the chart. This is the static chart. 
that we that stays with that piece of content. So I think it's really important to look at a piece of content or a view around an individual stock and it has and give that view context. So this is what it was doing at the time we wrote that view. This is a static chart to show that. Uh, that's kept on the Market Matters website and that will be linked to that content all of the time. And then if we go back into the um, we go back into the actionable uh, framework, you can see all the different actions that we've listed for CBA over the course of time. And that ensures um, you know, really strong accountability around our actions over time. I mentioned that CBA is in um, a couple of the portfolios. I think that would be the, um, uh, the next um, spot to call. Although before I do, I'm just gonna go into the forecast and um, just talk about this stock report for a moment. This is a quantitative report that um, sources uh, five key inputs from Refinitiv. Um, the inputs, the, the, the um, inputs are listed in the information tab here, so I won't go through them, but there's some proprietary indicators around earnings quality, around the fundamentals of the business, about valuation versus peers, um, risk, you know, 10 out of 10 risk is actually low risk. It seems like it's it's high. Anything that is, is, is bad will be red. Anything that is good will be aqua. Um, and then price momentum, there's a, a, again, a bunch of indicators that will indicate um, or talk to price momentum. So you download that report, it'll pop straight up for members on their, um, uh, on their on their dashboard, I've got a few things open at the moment. Um, so when that loads, I'll um, I'll go there shortly. Um, but it's, it it gives you a pre PDF, a printer printable quantitative report that is um, uh, that is uh, here we go. For some reason, that didn't load. Not a great look. Um, we'll see how that goes in a second. All righty, so moving on. We've got, um, so we've got to the overview page and one of the next, um, hmm, not sure why that is not loading. We're doing some updates in the background as we speak. So um, perhaps that is the reason for that not loading. So apologies about that. We will sort that issue out. Uh, in terms of the portfolios, because that's what um, you know, a lot of people uh, look for in terms of the, the, the market matters service. We send out um, you know, SMS alerts when we transact on portfolios and email alerts. The SMS alerts are uh, for our flagship growth portfolio. And then we send email alerts out for all the other portfolios. As, um, uh, as uh, we highlighted before, there's the flagship growth portfolio did some alerts. They'll be, that goes on the website for 48 hours um, uh, for the alert. And if you click on the alert, you can get a bit more information on um, what and why we're while we're doing it and what portfolios um, they relate to. Just in terms of this, the other the thing we've added here is just a listen button. So we're putting on a bunch of different um, podcasts onto the site. We're gonna build these out over time and improve the quality of them. But um, you know, these are just, the, we do one at midday and we're doing one at the start of every trading day. So around sort of 7.30 in the morning, just looking at the overnight action. So um, I'm doing that at the moment, but I'm trying to palm that off to one of the other members of the Market Matters. Um, team. In terms of the portfolios, so if we go to the portfolios, the other feature that we've done is brought 20 minute delayed data into the portfolios. So looking at the income portfolio, um, this is now, so the pricing is now feeding into um, this portfolio and it's providing a dynamic gain and loss um, percentage on the, um, on the portfolio. So, and then you can drill into an individual stock. If we go back to um, uh, CBA or more importantly, let's, let's choose something different. Metcash, they had a good result yesterday. So you can go and look at, um, uh, go back into a stock um, uh, for um, a deeper dive into the charts, the, fun the fundamentals, et cetera. Um, the trade now buttons features throughout the site. So this just allows you to link your a preferred online broker um, uh, of your choice. All it does is when you hit the trade, if you link that broker, it will link your, it, when you hit the trade now button, it will take you to that broker's website, whether it's the order pad or not, it depends how you've got your features um, set up. So um, the portfolios are another sort of a, a, a dynamic um, input with this pricing data. I'm not going to go into the international 
um, pricing. And of course, the recent sales, which we have always done. And this section we have always done as well. So the opinion on the individual portfolios, whenever we cover a stock in the market matters uh, in that particular portfolio or a position in that particular portfolio, um, it will be linked below the portfolio itself. And whenever we take an action on any of the positions held in that portfolio, it will create the decision. It will look, it will link it in the decision tree, and you can go back and look at the action um, uh, at the at that particular time and the opinion that underpins the the action. Uh, I'm going to pause there, and we've got a bunch of questions that have um, are starting to come through. So I'm just going to go back to the dashboard, and perhaps we can get through some of uh, these um, questions um, that that uh, have come through. So James, what sort of investor would you say you were short, medium, long-term technical analysis, macro trends? Okay, so that's a, that's a really good question. So we combine technical analysis and uh, fundamental analysis. We start, I, I describe it as top down meets bottom up. So top down means we, you'll see that we write a lot about the macroeconomic um, picture and it will vary between different portfolios. So if you think about a large cap portfolio, uh, so our flagship growth portfolio, they're holding you know, large uh, companies within Australia. Those large companies are more impacted by the macroeconomic dynamics that are playing out. So that portfolio is naturally gonna be influenced more by the macro. If you think about emerging companies, perhaps income um, uh, and the like, the international is another one that's gonna be impacted heavily by the macroeconomic dynamics. Then we're more focused on the company specific dynamics that are playing out. So more micro in nature in terms of the emerging companies and the income portfolio. Um, so that's how I would um, describe it. We're active investors, but we're not traders is the other thing that we put out there. So we might hold a position. A lot of positions are held for multiple months. We've got some positions there that have been held for multiple years. So we try and manage portfolios for, 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 for performance, but we have to anchor it to the risk. So we're not about um, trying to beat the market all the time by taking disproportionate risks. Um, it has to be anchored in this risk reward framework that we speak about so often. In terms of other questions, hi, I couldn't find franking credits um, um, inputs to, to self-made super fund. Are they um, somewhere? No, there's no franking credits, unfortunately, on the site at this stage, um, uh, Francis. Wonderful, James, do you have the same information with US stocks? Arthur, we do. So if I, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll the, other, the other thing I, was, I need to just discuss is around um, searching on the site. So you look at Apple, you can type anything up there and the search results will come up and we've got um, Apple hospitality, Apple, um, anything that we've written about in terms of, um, in terms of Apple. So it should actually just go. So this is, this is the latest opinion. It's easier if you type in codes to the site, we are addressing some of the, um, the searching functionality on the site so uh, we've just launched it and when you when you when you we need to make it as easy as possible for people to search different things on the site so here is apple um, so you've got exactly the same information on us stocks we look at all ratios etc um, this gets updated on a nightly basis um, you can get the same detailed report um, the same estimates, um, uh, et cetera. Um, that of course is in our international portfolio related questions. So the answer, um, Arthur, is yes. Um, the same information is available on international um, stocks. And I'll go back um, there in terms of Nick, I think the website is brilliant. If you supplied the ability to buy and sell, then I would happily use it if the price. Yeah, so one of the, th one of the things that, um, one of the features that we were uh, looking to put in there in the original design was analysis, opinion, action, execution. So that's still a possibility, but I want to build something that's really, that's, that's offer adding value to the execution component. So I don't want to just plug in an online broker that, that everyone has. And the other thing that I think is really important, I want market matters to stay a, an independent trusted source of, of research and insight 
not a source, um, not, not linked to um, transactions or generating revenue through transactions. And I think that's really important. So um, I'm in two minds about that at the moment, Nick, um, but that is certainly on the, the table. When you talk about earning expectations, is there an average from the analysts who cover the company? They all have to put down their earnings expectations. Yep, um, that is the, um, so if you go back into um, CBA example that I used before, um, the expectations around earnings uh, delivered um, here. So that's the average. So net income, the mean is what you um, uh, what is going to be displayed here. So that takes in um, uh, all the different analyst expectations and comes up with a, a mean number. Where is a broker consensus source from? Um, it's an aggregation of all the big research houses. Yeah, so it's sourced from Refinitiv. Refinitiv, a, uh, one of the world's biggest data providers, um, they source all, you know, um, uh, they source uh, expectations from um, a broad number of uh, research houses. They plug them in there and that's what uh, comes out and spits out as consensus. Um, under each portfolio, there is an active statement next to some or most of the positions. What is the definition of active? What does it mean if there is no active statement? So, Brett, the, the definition of active means that we're still happy to buy it at current prices. Um, it's a buy, if you like, in old terminology. If there's no active one there, then it's more of a hold. So um, we might be looking to uh, offload it. We think we might think the stock is fully valued, et cetera. Um, so the, 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 the non-active is around a hold. It doesn't mean you can't go out there and replicate what we're doing. That's a complete decision for you. Um, but it's not as high conviction as what the active tag means. I was late to the webinar, uh, ignore the question. Um, after you've changed the look of the stock chart, can you save that? That's a really good, Brent, that's a really good point. So at this stage, no, but um, I have, we, we got these charts uh, developed and as part of the, um, uh, part of that, um, that was on our wish list. To launch the site now, we haven't put that in, but it is certainly a, a really key thing that we want to be able to do. So what that means is that when you go in as an individual and save your chart, so create a template, you can save that. It will apply that to all charts that you go into. Um, and over time, you can... Um, uh, and over time, you can um, uh, you know, create out your templates and, and every time you go to the site, your template, your individual template will be displayed. The income portfolio has a target performance of 7%. Does this include dividends? Yes, it does. Um, I'm currently using FN Arena for getting broker um, price targets. Um, good, I know Rudy is a mate of mine. Um, can you drill down into that detail in the MM website? So um, FN Arena do it do a lot of things manually so um I, yeah so at the end of the day i'm i'm i'm, I'm we're not going to list what broker is saying what in individual stocks we're going to give a consensus aggregation if you go and look at the at the um at the detailed stock report then you will have a better understanding of the trends that the consensus community is is doing i'm more about overall trends so a broker's overall in an upgrade cycle, a downgrade cycle, um, is their price momentum, is there not price momentum, are the fundamentals improving or deteriorating and the like. And I think that's more important to have consensus insight into, uh, into that. Um, James, do you suggest buys and sells in your emails website as they happen or on a daily or other timeframe basis? Uh, we suggest them as they, as they happen. Um, so that's the main difference uh, to the Market Matters website. We're in real time. So we're sending out um, as we're doing it. Has Market Matters uh, uh, considered an additional portfolio tab that can be manually loaded with the client specific open positions? Again, where there's this is version one and a number of things. I'm going to send out a subscriber survey uh, where, which will allow subscribers to provide more insight into features that they would want as we go and develop the site further. So uh, absolutely, um, that is a consideration going forward. I'm going to wrap it up there, but I hope today's uh, update has given you a, a good understanding of the, the, the new features on the website. We've taken a, a, a service that was primarily um, emails. We've built a website that had opinion plus action framework within it to give a bit more um, uh, organization around our views. Uh, and now we've put in uh, 
live 20 minute delayed data, fundamental data, forecasts and the like into an analysis tab and overlaid that with some advanced charting and the like. So we think it's a really great development. We hope you think it is as well, but we'll continue to work on our uh, online presence, uh, what we're offering our subscribers. And if you've got any insight, very much happy to hear it. And as always, we'll take that on board from our growing number of valued subscribers. Hope you had a great, um, hope you uh, got something out of today's webinar. Have a great afternoon. Bye for now.